Hello my friends and welcome to this new video of uh, the series of syntax. Well today we're going to talk about complements and adjuncts. Um, by the way, an advice if you have to revise the S2 uh, lessons, uh, specifically the verbs um, part because you will need it in this uh, grammar lesson that we will have today. <laughs> So without further talking, let's get started. The elements which are required, uh, required by the verb are called complements. The elements which do not require license, license uh, from the verb to occur in the predicate are called adjects and are typically optional elements. They can be omitted without affecting the grammaticality and central meaning of the sentence. They provide additional meaning connected uh, to the when, where, how, or why or of the situation. Example, time, place, manner, etc. But not what or who. The young linguist will meet his friend in the local gallery after lunch. Good come had I it will be your best friend. Had the example. Donc, had the example, we will see from uh, compliments, arguments, agents, and so on. So, yeah. Naya, they said that the arguments are his friend and the young linguist. Arguments. Be careful. Not compliments. Because... Um, well, let's see what are the adjuncts. Oh, I don't show for the, the, the adjuncts are in the local gallery after lunch. So, in the local gallery after lunch can be omitted. Now, I should look optional elements that can be omitted without affecting the grammaticality and the central meaning of the sentence. يعني هنا لو كان جينا وقلنا the young linguist will meet his friend and full stop, it will be grammatically correct. It will give us the full meaning, the um, the central meaning of the sentence. Well, can you can do in the local gallery after lunch. It's just an extra information of the time and the place. Is the when and the where, so they can be omitted. But we cannot omit his friend. For example, we cannot say the young linguist will meet in the local gallery after lunch. So, his friend, oh, his friend, here, his friend, is a compliment. We cannot omit it. The young linguist will meet who? See? Who? The young linguist will meet his friend. So, his friend is... The complement of the sentence. But the young linguist is the argument. It means that it is an essential part of the sentence. I mean, you cannot say, uh, will meet his friend who? I need to know who. Who will meet his friend? So this and this are essential parts of the sentence. I need to know the subject, the verb. And the complement to have one correct sentence that is grammatical. Okay, let's see another um, example. Because it was heavy, John put that parcel on the desk. Because it was heavy, it can be omitted. Well, we can say that John put that parcel on the desk. We'll stop. But because it was heavy, it's just an additional information of the situation of the the the, bar, the parcel. It was heavy, so that he put it on the desk. Okay. So here we got John, the first argument, the parcel, the second argument, and on the desk is the third argument. Why? Because put selects two complements. We cannot say John put that parcel. We need to know where. Because the verb put, we need to know what and where he put it. It has to do with 
um, uh, transitive verbs. Do you remember? But she has to come. You have to you have to to revise the 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 s two um, grammar because قاعد شلون غادي نشوفه هنا يا it has a relationship with it. Let's see the the next the next example because it was heavy. It was too heavy. John probably put that parcel on the desk last night. So we added probably. And last night to the sentence, which means that as much as you can add adjuncts to a sentence. Okay, so you can add them and you can omit them, just like we did in the previous examples. Another example: John gave Bill the money in the living room. Okay, so here we have the same thing. John give Bill the money. Here give needs to complement Bill and the money. Give what to who? Okay, in the living room is the eject. So we can omit it and say just John give Bill the money. Put stop. So adjuncts provide information about time, manner, reason, place. Um, modality and so on. Adjuncts are not arguments of the verb. Okay. <laughs> Consider the following examples. John abandoned the project. John abandoned. John abandoned after the project. So here we're having this in grammatical two examples, which means that the verb abandoned needs a complement so here john abandoned and we added an np to it as a complement so here the verb abandoned selects an np to be its complement john abandoned after the project is in grammatical too because the verb abandoned does not select a pp but it selects an np. From those examples, we can say that the verb abandoned must be must be associated with a noun phrase, an np. The absence of the np renders the sentence ungrammatical. Okay, so abandoned is a transitive verb that requires a complement of the category np which is its direct object okay that's why i told you that you have to revise your lessons of s2 because you really need to know what is the function of these um this uh, element uh, to the verb in order for you to know where to place it in the tree diagram so is it going to have the same node with the verb is it going to have a separated uh, uh, separated place or what okay so for that we need to know the function of each component of the sentence let's see another example another verb smile john smiled full stop John smiled his friend, full stop. So, the verb smile does not require actually any additional information, just smile and that's it. But when we say John smiled his friend, his friend here is an NP, so it's not working. We can say John smiled to his friend, so the verb smile selects a PP but not an NP. Okay, we, we can say just smile and it's okay. But if we want to add an additional uh, information, which will be in this case, it's complement because it will give us uh, uh, additional information about the verb. John smiled to his friend will be its complement. Unlike abundant, smile does not require the presence of NP. Traditionally, smile is an untransitive verb. This means that it cannot be followed by an NP 
like his friend. Okay, so uh, it's an intransitive verb. Does not require a complement, but in case you added something, it must be an NPP, not an NP. John lives in an apartment. John lives in an apartment. So here we uh, deleted the preposition in from the sentence to make it just an NP. Life selects a PP and not an NP. We say we will say that a verb selects a complement for uh, of a specific kind. For example, and I have had sentences, two sentences had um, for example, you let us come she sentences palhaka, this good like why this sentence is in grammatical and why this sentence is grammatical. You will uh, easily say the verb for example another verb to live and you will say live selects an pp or pp and not an np this uh, phrase here we had it the general form of the phrase you know, you, you can use it for any type of, of for any kind of of uh, of verbs of uh, and of uh, complements. For example, here we have the um, Where was I? Yeah, abandoned. The verb abandoned selects an NP and not a PP, like here. And here, the verb abandoned selects a complement, which needs to be a PP. NP the verb abandoned selects an NP like you like here and without without uh, panicking and it's not that that complic complicated but it's sometimes confusing you may be confused sometimes as I do me too I get confused sometimes but Hanaya the verb smile it does not uh, select any uh, any complement because it's an intransitive verb. Other verb verbs select a sentence as their complement. For example, John wondered whether Bill would leave. Hadi Kamla is the complement of the verb wonder. The verb wonder selects the complement whether Bill would leave, which is itself a clause. The list of verbs is so long. Example, put, hunt, give, etc. etc. This specific uh, realization of the complement selected by a verb might differ from one language to another, while English diatransitive verb the verbs may be followed by two NPs or by an NP and the PP. Only uh, the later option is obtained in French. Um, they are transitive. It means that some verbs end on more than just one complement. They can end on two complements, three complements, and so on. For example, Jean gave a bill the manuscript. <coughs> And the verb give <coughs> selects two complements. Can you now for the example? It selects two complements, Bill and the manuscript. We cannot say just John give Bill. We are waiting for something else. Like give needs what and to who, to whom he gave the the uh, the manuscript. Okay. John a donné Bill le manuscrit. Donc, in French, donc, <laughs> in French, uh, we do not use the both uh, forms like in English. Like we here, we have John gave the manuscript to Bill, and John gave Bill the manuscript, and it they are both um, uh, grammatically correct. But in French, it's not. We have to say. Jean a donné le manuscrit à Bill. Okay. Tu is a. Okay. 
bill needs to be uh -huh, there's a mistake here okay so this one is in grammatical not like english french is different to conclude verbs such as abandon has two arguments abandoned we saw um, john abandoned the project so the argument is john and the project smile does not require any um, uh, it, it, it requires just one argument, which is John. Okay. Lives required uh, two arguments, uh, the NP and the PP. Okay. Give required three arguments, John, Bill, and the manuscript. Okay. I hope you do understand, really. Because it's kind of confusing. Well, we finished with with this um, uh, complement and adjunct uh, thing. Uh, there is um, uh, a small um, title that you you need to know, which which is called recursion. And recursion is uh, described as the ability to place one component inside another component of the same kind like an NP inside another NP inside another NP inside another NP when a category appears on both the left and the right side of the, uh, a rule or a pair of rules uh, transitively in the same grammar the set of structures generated by this grammar is non-finite like you can add whatever number of NPs that you can in the sentence and the same thing goes to PPs and VPs and so on so the construction is NPs um, consists of of debt followed by N followed by PP the same thing goes with uh, PP, consists of P followed by NP. Recursion is defined as a property of language that allows for the embedded of category, which can yield an infinitely a long sentence or insert infinitely long sentences. Like the, these two examples, the cat on the mat in the house, on the street, near the bank, uh, I don't know, um, uh, beside the bakery. You can add however number of PPs after this one, but in condition they have to be the same kind, yeah, of the same kind. And here we have, John believed that Katie knew that Mary helped George. So here, or uh, uh, the same category, like um, uh, CP inside a CP inside a CP. Okay? So I hope really you did uh, understand what I was uh, explaining. And if you have anything that you want to ask about please leave it in the comment uh, section below uh, i'll be glad to uh, answer all your questions uh, if i couldn't answer any questions i will tell you promise <laughs> just post them and if anyone else can help you in these um uh, this um, course or the other courses that i've posted please do not um uh, do not keep the information from others because as you know sharing is caring uh, Till the next video I say goodbye keep up and enjoy 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 learning bye